Hello, and welcome to Not Everyone's Cup of Tea, where we provide you with social commentary and public service announcements from unqualified experts on the questionable behavior of jerks. Today, we'll be discussing Thanksgiving and how not to be a dick about it. If you're hearing this after the holiday, don't worry. You could just take the word Thanksgiving out of most of what we say and drop it in literally any family gathering and still get the point of what we're saying. But because we're planning our Thanksgiving dinner now, there's going to be a bunch of food talk. I want to start by saying that I love Thanksgiving. It's the one day every year that I'm certain about what I want to eat. Ask anybody. I will usually panic and default to sandwiches or tacos like some 10-year-old. Thanksgiving is also great because it's kind of smushed in between two holiday seasons. Like, imagine a bizarro Oreo where the cookie bit is wedged in between two great big decadent globs of cream. Mm -hmm. Halloween candy and costumes and decorations are all on sale in August, like, you know, a week before Christmas rolls out. Mm -hmm. All that happens in preparation for Thanksgiving is a little reorganization of the grocery store shelves the week before, because literally no one knows where cranberry sauce lives the rest of the year. Thanksgiving is that cookie bit, kind of rigid and enjoyable on its own, but lacking the panache of a standalone treat. A lot of production goes into this meal, but then people can't wait to slough it off and get to the mall for their first crack at Christmas bargains. It's almost like people toss out their jack-o'-lanterns and immediately replace them with inflatable Santas. But let's be honest, there probably isn't a whole bunch of Thanksgiving merchandise that really could sit on the shelves for a couple of weeks. Like, would you go in for sweet potato Snickers? So yeah, Thanksgiving is kind of weird and a little gluttonous, but you're not mad at it. Like, the American calendar has a ton of great and weird holidays, but Q4 really nails it. All right, dude, so should we start with capital T Thanksgiving or lowercase t Thanksgiving? I think we should start with capital T right at the beginning, the first Thanksgiving. Uh, Funny enough, there's evidence that the first Thanksgiving was actually in St. Augustine in 1565. This wasn't like a harvest celebration meal, though. The story goes that the Spanish came ashore built a makeshift altar to thank God for their safe passage, and invited the confused natives to have dinner with them. Now, I don't get to say this often, but yay, Florida did something right. But this was more like a grand opening reception. I think the meal most of us have in mind, the one that stuck, was the pilgrims at Plymouth Rock. Now, mind you, this location was chosen because almost 90% of the native population had recently died from what one historian charmingly called the Indian fever, <clears throat> actually European diseases. That sounds about right. So not only would there be vacant plots to turn into a new settlement, but very little resistance from the locals because, you know, they were dead. So I know the story we were fed in school is like, hi, I'm Squanto. This is how you plant corn. Yay, corn is so dope. Let's have a potluck and all live happily ever after. But in real life, it was much different. Yeah, poor Squanto. So he was kidnapped and taken to Spain to be sold into slavery. There's a lot of variations of what happened to him in the intervening years. But the main point is that by the time he got back to New England, an epidemic had wiped out all his homies. The next year, the Mayflower shows up and he was kind of like the welcoming committee. So he had convinced the chief of a nearby tribe to form an alliance with the pilgrims. Basically, he was like, I've seen these Lamos in their natural habitat, and we could totally use some pawns to keep the other tribes off our back. So our man Squanto acted as kind of a local guide, a translator, and a diplomat for the pilgrims. Until, obviously, he died of the Indian fever two years later. No good deed goes unpunished, right? And we just learned about this in recent years. Now, don't get me wrong. We went to a great school, but after some time, we started to realize that many of the things we learned were taught through a very white lens. So there's definitely some gaps in history that we missed as children. And we grew up in New England. We even went to Plymouth, Massachusetts one year for Thanksgiving. Yeah, we spent a few days at a living history museum. We hung out in a recreation of the settlement and the Indian village. We had dinner while Civil War era reenactors sang Christmas carols. Incidentally, this is where I learned Abe Lincoln was the first president to declare Thanksgiving a national holiday. So it was a basic nerd vacation itinerary. 
What we didn't expect was the parade to Plymouth Rock that the descendants of the native tribes hold every year, demonstrating what they call a day of mourning. That was the first time I ever wondered if maybe there was more to the story than just some nice dude sharing corn. See, I don't remember any of that from the trip. My experience was that I was 15 years old. I just, a few days before, got my belly button pierced because, you know, it was the 90s. But it was healing and I was in so much pain and I just couldn't tell anybody because I was 15 and not supposed to go get things pierced. So (laughs) every nerdy vacation our family goes on, we always end up at ye olde Photoshop to dress up like whatever era we're visiting. There's so many of these sepia toed photos at my parents' house. It's ridiculous. But so since we were in Plymouth, they dressed us up like pilgrims. So as the person who's running the photo studio, they're tying this like terrible pilgrim apron around my waist, like right into my open wound belly button. And it was like took me took everything I had not to scream out in pain. So I mean That's really got nothing to do with the story, but that's my main memory from Plymouth. And, you know, if somebody in your family is being shitty on a holiday, maybe it's not about you. Maybe they're dealing with something completely personal, like an open wound they can't tell anybody about because they're underage. All right. Speaking of open wounds, let's talk about modern holidays. (laughs) (laughs) Good segue. It kind of seems like the original pact was, we'll stop murdering you if you stop murdering us. Cool. So maybe the modern version would be, I won't talk about politics if you won't talk about politics. Cool? Like everyone has that taboo topic. Hey guys, when we get in there, remember, do not talk about the president in front of grandpa. Get these talks out of the way beforehand. Otherwise, you could end up in a big fight. Also, compromise is good. Maybe try making new traditions together. So maybe your family has Thanksgiving traditions other than a big dinner. Maybe they wake up at 5 a.m. and run the turkey trot marathon. Fuck knows why. But maybe you spend <laughs> the whole day at a football game and then eat turkey later on at night. One year, I decided I was going to get up early and volunteer at the soup kitchen. My parents heard that and thought it was a great idea, and they decided to join me. We very quickly learned that we are not get up early and volunteer kind of people. So it's November in Connecticut, outside early in the morning. So it is cold as fuck. And while I was very grateful that I didn't have to sleep there that night, and I was really trying to check my privilege, but I could not have been more excited when my mom came back from Dunkin' with hot coffee and the heater running in the car. I don't want to sound like a dick. I still do volunteer work, but you know, at a decent hour of the day and in a much warmer climate. All right. How about we start the food talk now? Hell yeah. All right. So if you have someone coming to your house for the first time, maybe warn them what to expect or ask them what they expect. So maybe you can make things more comfortable for them. Be clear about what's going to be on their plate. Literally. Like Mexican families will spend the whole day making tamales. Italian families will have pasta and probably some seafood. And don't even think about trying to serve an Irish person some boxed potato flakes. Hell no. No, just just don't. I remember the first time I celebrated Thanksgiving with a different family, and there were baked beans on the table. Like, what in the 4th of July is happening here? Where's all the food I grew up eating and assumed was on everyone's table? And this goes for all holidays, and in some cases, weekly traditions. Like, some families make Sunday dinner a big thing, and you're kind of a dick if you have something better to do. So talk about these things with people who you decide to spend holidays with. If you're in a multi-generational family, maybe check to see if grandma is still happy hosting and preparing a big dinner, or maybe it's time to start passing the torch. These are also things that you discuss when you're starting a new relationship. I know a woman who's Jewish and always seems to forget about Christmas when planning her holidays. She constantly plans to take her kids out of town, even though their dad is planning on having them around for Christmas. A Catholic person may see this as a huge slight, but a Jewish person may not even realize it's a thing. But also, don't be the kind of person who uses kids as a bargaining chip. That's a special brand of douchebag. 
Just like the discussion about traditions, you should talk about family dynamics and values before deciding to make a new human in a world that you can't successfully blend with another's. It's so sad when people have kids with someone and then freak out that they can't imagine spending 18 years making plans with the other person. I hear this so much. And nowadays, everyone is divorced and everyone has baby mama or baby daddy issues. I just don't get it. So if you're hooking up with someone that you can't see yourself respecting enough to civilly discuss holiday plans in the future, wear a condom. I can't stress that enough because for all the stress that you go through, the kid goes through more. Imagine being an innocent child and feeling abandonment or feeling insufficient when the issue actually has nothing to do with you. Sometimes kids don't even realize that until well into their 30s when they finally seek counseling. But maybe your little family unit is golden. It's the extended family that won't budge. Maybe you don't feel like you have the freedom to deviate from certain traditions, even though they're excruciating. We had a Capulets and Montague situation in our family in Fair Orange County, where we lay our scene. Basically, our mom's family didn't like our dad and our dad's family didn't like our mom. And most of the family adhered to the perfectly standard passive aggressive backstabbing that you see in most families, but we're still able to keep up a front. But not our maternal grandmother, though. Nope. She has been very vocal in her hatred of my dad and has used it as an excuse to pretend that his children do not exist. So she's been punishing us for decades for some perceived slight from the age of disco. Do you even understand how bad someone has to be at grandma ing to have their grandchildren say that they suck? Like, old people can get away with some outlandish shit. Like, they could say something abusive or surly or just downright racist and homophobic. And their grandkids will be like, oh, granny, you know, she's she's from a different time. Grandparents can be crazy as fuck, and it's still charming. So for us to roast our only living grandparent, she has to be the actual worst. And, you know, I'm not even worried about her hearing this because she would have had to ever take an interest in our lives to even know we had a podcast. Last time I saw her was 2007, and the whole side of the family had come to Vegas to celebrate a cousin's 21st birthday. One of my cousins met me and brought me to see Grandma in the casino. I saw her sitting at a slot machine and said, Hi, Grandma. She barely looks away from the screen and says, Who are you? Well, here's a hint. I called you Grandma. But then later on in the evening, when she had some drinks in her, she loosened up a bit. And then she actually said, aren't you happy you're with the good side of the family now? Good side? Bitch, I will give you $100 right now if you can tell me when my birthday is. Look, I will just give you my debit card right now if you know offhand what my middle name is. And you know what? I don't take kindly to people talking shit about my dad, even if they are blood. But so since then, I have not seen or heard from my grandmother, not even a phone call to say Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday. I am almost 40 years old and can count on one hand how many times I've seen this woman. In fact, she only lives about 200 miles away. And Shannon, who lives 2,000 miles away, I've seen Shannon more times in 2021 than I've seen Grandma in the 21st century. So the worst part is grandma's son, my uncle, feels the need to tell me that I'm a bad grandchild, like puts me on blast on social media. Anytime I'm in California and I post a picture of myself doing something in LA and he'll comment, your grandmother lives not too far from there. Do the right thing and go see her. First of all, I am not going to spend a day in LA traffic just to visit a woman who doesn't even know who I am. If she wanted me to visit her, she'd invite me. Also, he didn't DM me. He went rogue in the picture comments for everyone to see. First of all, this is how old people ruined Facebook. But second, why put our business in the comments? Why paint it like I'm the bad guy? This woman couldn't find it in herself to be the bigger person for 40 years. 
But now that I'm grown, I'm supposed to be the bigger person. You were an adult. I was a child. You should have been better. I don't owe you a goddamn thing. So yeah, grandma's pretty much right up there on my list with John Mayer. So maybe maybe next time they're both in Vegas, they can get together with Chris Angel and eat a bowl of dicks. Are we talking about Chris Angel now? Oh, dude, I don't know if we have enough time. All right, that's fine. We can get back to it. He knows what he did. But anyway, in a way, I'm grateful that our extended family was shitty because it made our immediate and chosen family stronger. We have uncles and aunts that aren't even related, but were our parents' friends while we were growing up, and we're still close with now. My fake aunt takes me to dinner every time she's in Vegas, and I love her. Our chosen family has been there for life events, birthdays, holidays, weddings, and funerals, when we could never count on our real family. There comes a point when everyone should realize that they're allowed to choose who gets to be at their table and who is not invited. But the reason I tell this story, not just to illustrate quintessential Irish grudges, but as an example of how not to let dumb shit affect the next generation. We decided that no matter who our siblings marry, we are not going to do what the generation before us did. (laughs) <laughs> oh, and Mike really loves to test us with this. Am I right, Shannon? <laughs> that poor guy. No, no, no. I'm just messing with him. I think he's got it right this time. But having grown up with the effects of another generation's grudges, we know firsthand the damaging effects it has on children. Imagine being a child and thinking you're not good enough for your grandmother's love. Imagine thinking there's something wrong with you at such a young age. So before you decide to blend families and make new humans, maybe decide what your family dynamic will be like. You know, some families are close and some are not, and that's fine. But if you are not on the same page, maybe one of you is going to look like a big asshole when you break the unspoken rules. That's the stuff that can make holiday dinner, or worse, the drive home, real uncomfortable. So with all of that in mind, this brings us back to lowercase t Thanksgiving. And that's exactly what it sounds like if you break it into two words, thanks and giving. It's giving thanks to whatever universal entity helped you bring about the bounty that you have reaped, whatever it is that you're thankful for. Go around any communal table today and everyone will be thankful for some derivation of family or health because those are acceptable and heartwarming, if not entirely sincere. No one says they're grateful for the tip that sent them to buy GameStop stop. GameStop stars. No one's thankful for Gobstoppers. <laughs> it's the impossible Gobstopper. Or what was that sh- bullshit from, uh, what's the fucking kid with the lazy ass parents? Yeah, Willy Wonka. Yes, thank you. Because <laughs> my, my description was perfect. <laughs> All them bitches was in bed. I know all four of them are all in bed. Yeah, and he's like, I've got a golden ticket. He's like, I can walk now. <laughs> really? Get a job, bitch. Why are we all eating cabbage soup every night? <laughs> hey, Grandpa Joe's been collecting the uh, disability check. Oh man, I hope he doesn't de- claim that fucking chocolate factory on their tax return this year. So he gets fucking audited. <laughs> Once his face is in the paper. We'll be taking all that cabbage soup now. <laughs> we missed the whole point of the story, and I was just like, you know, with the lazy ass grandparents, and you're like, fuck yeah, Willy Wonka. <laughs> like nothing about like the candy factory or or Willy Wonka himself as a character. Nothing, nothing about him. Honestly, I like that better because that just proves that I knew where you were going. All you said was those lazy ass parents, and it wasn't the parents that were lazy, but I knew you meant the grandparents. Oh, absolutely! I knew you were picturing them all in their freaky ass bed together, like a bunch of poor creepers. <laughs> Grandpa Joe was like, "It's a miracle I could walk." All right. (laughs) Wait, what were we doing? I think we were podcasting. (laughs) Oh, right, right. That's why my screen is up like this. Okay. Right. I said no one one says they're grateful for gobstoppers. (laughs) No one says they're grateful for the tip that sent them to buy GameStop stock. No one says they're grateful they inherited the firm boobs from one side of the family instead of the knobby knees from the other side. It's kind of taboo to speak of anything relating to prosperity, but that's where this all started. Each spring, you were thankful when your livestock had a successful birth. 
And every autumn. What, what's autumn? Autumn is that time of year. I know we don't really have it that much where we live, but um, autumn is right between like the hot time and the cold time. It's like those two weeks. Oh, it's like when they have all the orange shit in the grocery store. It's when candy corn comes out. Oh, oh yeah. Autumn. Okay. So yeah, every candy corn season, you were thankful that your crops would see you through the winter. And that's why Thanksgiving is cool in the modern sense. You get to appreciate your friends and family without the commercialism. It's, it's the calm before the Black Friday storm. We could probably go on and on about family bullshit, but we'll save that for another episode. So for now, let's recap. It's great to honor traditions, but let's remember why we started these traditions in the first place. Be thankful for whatever truly makes your heart happy. Whoever you choose to have at your table will get it. Appreciate your people. Don't hold on to grudges, because honestly, you never know when the next Indian fever could be around the corner. And most importantly, no respectable plate includes boxed potato flakes. Shannon, can you repeat that again, maybe louder? Happily. All right. Nice and loud. No respectable plate includes boxed potato flakes. This PSA has been for the dicks. And the people who don't make real mashed potatoes. If this has not been your cup of tea, then you're probably a dick. Sorry. Email us and tell us tell us why we're always open to discussion and debate. Let's hear the other side. Let's talk about it. And if this has been your cup of tea, that's awesome. You're awesome. Subscribe to us. Follow us. Rate us. Review us. All that good shit. Links are in the show notes. And tune into our next episode where we will delve deeper into controversial topics and provide the world with more PSAs. Whether it's been your cup of tea or not, either way, thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye, dude. Bye, dude.